This video will cover the installation of an airtight air compression clamp system onto this Minimax SI315 Elite S sliding table saw. I had read about this system on some forums and then contacted Mac Kempshire to learn more. The more I read and saw, the more impressed I was, and I couldn't wait to get his system installed on my saw. When the box arrived, there was no doubt that much care had gone into packing it so that nothing would be damaged. Even the straps were taped to the box. Once the box was open, I saw that there was more than one layer of cardboard to protect the precious cargo. Turns out that each of the clamps comes in its own individual box. And inside that box is plenty of additional padding to keep everything unscratched. Here are the individual pieces contained in the boxes. The first step in installation is to disassemble the roller which will mount on the in-feed side of the sliding table support to keep the airline from binding as the slider rolls forward and backwards. I removed the roller from the bracket along with the included mounting screws. The bracket mounts on the non-moving support part of the long slider. Since this part is extruded with different channels, it is important to identify where the bolts will go through the end plate and not hit any of the supports. I decided to use one of the original mounting bolts to mount the bracket, and I needed to drill a hole in the end plate to mount another bolt and nut. In order to determine the exact location of the other hole, I removed the lower right mounting bolt, placed protective tape on the end plate, and fastened the bracket back onto the end plate. I could then mark the location of the other hole. I also checked to make sure that there was no interference when the slider rolled over the mounting bracket. I then removed the end plate so I could drill the indicated hole. Once the hole is drilled, you can use the included bolt to mount the bracket on the end plate. Make sure it is tight and nice and straight since you won't be able to access the nut again after it is mounted. Now you can mount the end plate back on the end of the extrusion. And then mount the roller in the bracket. Here is a shot of the same end of the slider itself with its end plate removed. As you can see, there are different channels which can be used to run the airlines through. I decided on the largest one in the top center. More on that later. I once again applied tape to the end cap and marked the locations of the holes I would drill for the three airline quick disconnects. Here is the same end cap with the three holes drilled. The quick disconnects get installed as shown with the male side of the disconnects on the back. While tightening the nuts, I tried to have them stay lined up for consistency. The air lines then easily slide into the quick disconnects and the nuts tighten to seal them. Here is a shot of all three assembled and the air lines attached. Slide the air lines into the end of the slider and reattach the end plate. The installation on the leading edge of the slider is done. Here you can see the quick disconnects all hooked up to the pressure regulator, air filter, and airtight clamp. This is a look at the pressure regulator air filter mounted to a magnet and affixed to the saw body in line with the roller. It is important to have this centered on the roller so that the clear air line doesn't bind or leave the roller when the sliding table is moving. You can also see the air supply line that I ran from a quick release on the adjacent column in the garage. Now remove the end plate on the handle side of the slider. Here you see the corresponding channels in the extruded sliding table from the other side. It is important to use the same channels that the airlines were fed through as shown here. Something I didn't take into account was the minimum amount of lip that was present on the top of the end plate. As you can see in this picture, when taking into account the thick wall on the top of the sliding table, there was not enough room to mount the quick disconnects adjacent to the channel I used without some modifications. If I had used the channel to the left of the one with the airlines in it, I probably could have avoided having to make the following modifications. As you can see, I ended up cutting out a portion of the plate to make room for the quick disconnects and leave room to plug in the air lines. I then attached the quick disconnect to the end plate just like on the other side of the slider. Here are a few shots of airtight clamps installed on other saws which did not require the modifications that I did. And like I said, if I had thought it through beforehand, I could have done it differently and saved myself the extra work. However, once I had drilled the holes in the end plate, I was committed. 
The next step was to attach the air lines and reinstall the end plate. The air lines come a little longer than needed, so you have room to attach them to the quick disconnects. Prior to connecting them, I cut them down so that about 3 inches were sticking out from the end of the slider. Here is the finished product on the handle side of the slider. I put a black dot above the quick disconnect on both sides which will be connected to the black air hose to make it easy to reconnect in the future. The air hoses are very easy to connect by pushing in on the tab and inserting the hose and into the quick disconnect. Here are some final shots of the install. This demonstration will illustrate why these clamps are so helpful. With the red slide valve in the down position, the lever on the handle side clamp controls both clamps. When cutting a 4x8 sheet, that is extremely helpful. The lever on the in-feed side clamp is not operational in this mode. When you move the red slide valve to the up position, both clamp levers work independently. Here is a demo of the standard use of the clamps extended out for a 4x8 sheet of plywood. To me, this is where this system especially shines. Not having to walk around the sheet to lock it down saves a lot of time. When you need to cut something less than 8 feet, it is easy to slide the handle side clamp and set it up for whatever length of rip or crosscut you need to do. In this demonstration, I used a 2x4 to clamp down a warped sheet of plywood. The clamps have lots of adjustability to accomplish these types of tasks. Here is a demonstration of cross-cutting some hardwood with the edge against the fence. The clamps are set from the factory so that the foot comes down onto the workpiece at an angle. This helps hold the piece against the fence. However, if you prefer, you can change the settings so that the foot is applying pressure straight down instead. All you have to do is loosen this bolt shown, which allows you to rotate the cylinder to a vertical position in relation to the clamp support. Loosen the locking lever to rotate the assembly until it is vertical on both planes, and then use the supplied wrench to loosen the nut, shown, to rotate the cylinder. When you tighten up this nut, just snug it up. You don't want to over tighten it. I hope you have enjoyed this installation and demonstration video. I am extremely happy with the high quality of machining and materials, and the great deal of thought that went into making this an outstanding setup. I highly recommend this airtight clamp system to anyone who has a sliding table saw and would like to save a great deal of time and add a big margin of safety as well. Now that I've been spoiled by using these clamps, I can't imagine not having them. Please keep your eye out for other Allen Vision installation and demonstration videos to come. Thanks for watching.